Hello YouTube, the S&P just failed at a 78% Fibonacci area, which we can note right here. And this is not good because we do have a head and, head and shoulders pattern inside of here. So when we look to the uh, S&P, we know we're right back here to support. But when we look to a chart like the Russell, this is where it gets a little bit scary because we actually dropped down by 2% today. That's a pretty massive move. And with that, that move in this headline, a week of 1% moves on the S&P could trigger for selling. Last time it was uh, $28.8 billion worth of selling. And this was a month ago on August 10th. We want to make sure that we understand if we get below the short-term price or that 50 MA, don't be surprised when the bearish pattern does play out. We're looking for consolidation this month. And uh, with the month of September generally being the worst month for the S&P, it's a nice scary headline. We talked about it on the weekend. So let's go through and give an update to what could happen this week. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is just the fact that we're here at the Fibonacci area. We focused on the ES, but now we're going to look at SPY to try to understand that there is a bit of a push-pull happening right now. So right now, we're going to look here to our weekly chart. We noted that we did have that 5% uh, that dip. We went to an inside bar. The direction of that break was up, but now we have another inside bar. So what does that mean? Repeat the cycle. Inside bar, watch for the short-term break. So we have two, sorry, we got three higher lows and one higher high so far. That is not an offensive. That is both playing defense twice and then playing offense once. Sorry, defense three times now as of the open of this candle because we got three higher lows, but we only have one higher high. So if we're expecting the chart to go higher right here, right now, when they've only actually moved the chart higher in one week out of uh, probably five or six, I don't think that's very realistic. And then we look here to our blue line. Let's remember why that's important. It's important because it's a mathematical number, 78.6% Fibonacci area. So we hit our 5% dip. We go all the way back up to that math number. And then we hit the final boss, which says you're not going to go any higher, at least for right now. So we're below this blue line. And if we zoom in nice and close, it'll be a little bit more obvious. So we look here and to see there's the blue line. We're clearly rejecting off of it and closing below yesterday's low. We look at QQQ though. The story is a little bit different. QQQ actually bounced off the blue line. So that's like the last piece of the puzzle. We know that the S&P 500, or when we look at these blocks, it represents 500 stocks. So the Russell has 2,000 stocks. The, uh, the NASDAQ has 100. But it really just depends on how you want to look at the data. So we know the tech looks pretty good right now, but the Russell does not. What does that tell us? What does it mean? All right, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor, please and thank you. If you could please consider smashing that thumbs up and subscribing to the channel, I would really, really appreciate that. We put out stock market videos every single day. And I'll just thank you ahead of time because you guys have been a great support and I just appreciate it. So anyways, moving forward here, we note that uh, QQQ actually looks pretty good, right? Bouncing off our previous resistance over that Fibonacci area. It could all change pretty fast. But if we're going to get a breakout or a higher high, what does the NASDAQ have here? We got one, two, three weekly higher lows. And then we also have one, two. We got two higher highs so far. And uh, this looks like it's pretty closer to last week's high. It should be able to break out. Again, should um, doesn't mean it can. It means it should. And uh, if we get that higher high, I would be looking for the S&P to get dragged up. On the flip side, though, if we do focus on smaller cap names, well, like the Russell is like not really all that great. We got a bearish cross here, right, which means a death cross. And uh, the daily chart just looks like crap. It looks terrible. So we want to be mindful of that. So now we focus on the S&P. Let's go back to that and see if there's anything else that's telling us here. We have a slight short-term uptrend on our daily chart as we're looking at this resistance here. So we're still pointing up. We got other major uptrends we're looking at here going all the way back to October and going all the way back to March. Previous resistance has turned into support. So as long as we're trending up on this time, uh, this, this trend line, I think we're pretty good. Pretty good does not mean it has to go higher. It just means the chart looks pretty good. Final thing I would note here, we have an inverse head and shoulders setting up on that 50 DMA. So here's what you want to think about. If we go down, lose the 50 DMA, short-term break that uptrend, but then recapture it to go higher. Is that going to trap you out? Is that going to fake you out? Um, do we need to hold the 50 MA? Well, we're at risk of losing it right now. If you only look at one chart on ES, we're like only five points higher right now. The S&P has more cushion. So we just want to make sure we're understanding what is relevant to us. Something else we can't forget is that the dollar is on the move. The dollar is moving dramatically higher right now. It's up by about 0.6% on the day, which means stocks should actually be down by 0.6%. For some reason, the NASDAQ's up, and I think that's due to Tesla, which is currently up by 4.69%. Elon would be proud. We reviewed this chart on the weekend, so link in the description if you want to read that or watch that. 
but here it's trying to reclaim that 50 MA. Still trying to go up after stopping to go down, uh, but it has to make a run if it wants to get to that gap zone like Apple. All right, let's get through the news and look at some charts if we still have time at the end. So we note that uh, last time it was $28 billion worth of selling. This was the precursor to the sell-off. So if I start to see that daily ranges get bigger, closer, closer to that 1% range, I'm going to be watching for that really close. Why? Because it could be bad. It could be, uh, it could be a flush wound. It could be more than a flush wound. Let's be mindful of it. Um, and also, uh, retail thinks we're going to go uh, down this week. So are they going to make it painful for the bear for bears first, right? Take it up and then take it down into the later part of the week. I could see them doing that. It doesn't mean they have to. But with a fairly light data week this week, I'm not really sure. Uh, uh, let me actually just pull up the calendar for a second. So retail thinks we're going to go down. We're back into greed. So do we want to let people buy into the greed? Or is this time real? Was the dead cap bounce on the S&P going to turn into a reversal? Well, then that means that we should push back over 60, closer to extreme greed, um, to, which is like where we were earlier. There's not really that much economic data this week. So I think it's really all about technical price action. There is a Bank of Canada rate decision on Wednesday, September 6th at 10 a.m. Um, they're expected to pause. That could um, be a positive sign for the Fed, but it could also lead to the U.S. dollar actually going even higher because that's what's been a large part of the DXY lately. The Canadian dollar is terrible. It's at a five-month low which means that it's actually dragging the US dollar higher, which makes stocks more expensive. So it's a double-edged sword. We also talked about how we could be doing that uh, 2007 pattern here, where as long as we keep holding those monthly higher lows, we should be good. That's where I think if we hold, we're good. If we don't, then right, uh, everything's bullish until it isn't. Looking at the heat map here, uh, Tesla's green, Oracle's green, but lots of red. Let's zoom out and see if this is the dominant time frame as we're opening a new month. Ah, there's Mr. Green. So in the last week, this looks like this looks like the reason why we're backing back into greed. If you look at the last one month, well, uh, outside of the big guys, right, the fan, the magnificent magnificent seven, the uh, right, the trillion dollar companies, whatever you want to call them, or if you're a credit card company, that's not a really good sign for me. Why would Visa and Mastercard be up? Well, maybe people are having a hard time affording everyday life, which means they're throwing it on the Visa or Mastercard. That makes sense. Um, there's not really much of a theme other than other than that. Oil or inflationary things are going up. Visa and MasterCard are up. And the trillion dollar companies are up. Uh, if chips are going to lead tech and tech is going to lead spy, this one week heat map better feed through to this one, one month heat map or there's, there's a risk we could go lower. There's a risk that some negative headlines could resurface like why these two people are currently buddying up for a new bromance and it is a danger to the world, right? Look at those two guys, right? If, you're, if you want the definition of masculinity, look at those two guys. Um, right, the bromance with uh, China's not looking out, looking so good. And then just read this little doozy here, this nice little headline. I don't want to read it. I'm going to ask you to. Uh, but they're talking about some potential potential es escalations, um, which if that happened, uh, that could lead to that nasty surprise. So what I want to leave you with is the fact that we talked about this on the weekend. Um, five to ten percent corrections are normal. They usually happen at least once a year. So now let's go back to the S and P. Look at that one week chart. And just see whether or not we've already had a 5 or 10% drawdown so far this year. We had a cut right here, and we have a cut right here. Um, we started the year off here in January. So this is the moment where we start the year off. There's our first cut. There's our second cut. What do we get? We went down here by about 9%, uh, 9.5%. And then we went down by 5 So what does that mean? It means that in roughly the last, uh, what is it, August, September? So roughly the last nine months, we've had a 5% drawdown. And we've had a 9% drawdown, which means that it's normal, um, which works out to more than one a year. We've already had two. Can we get a third? Absolutely. Do we need to? I'm not so sure. So if you want to if you want to watch more, I encourage you to click on the video now queued up here on the left-hand side. It should be the weekend deep dive. So the chart has failed, but it could be a trap. So with that said, thank you for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And thank you.